Hey there fellow travelers, I'm Jocelyn with Walter's World and I'm in Colkey in Northern Ireland um, at the Stairway to Heaven and oh my gosh, it's a stairway. Anyway, I wanna really do this video about safety for women when we're traveling, whether you're traveling together or you're traveling solo. These are kind of things that can help you just be aware and maybe be a little bit safer when you travel. So tip number one is to blend in with the locals. There are a lot of ways to do that. I like to employ shopping because I like to shop, but also I really like buying clothes when I'm traveling because I think they're great souvenirs that I can, you know, like take the memory home with me. But the advantage of that when you're traveling is that you look like um, the people where you are. And if you can blend in with locals, you're less likely to be targeted by like pickpockets and things like that. You just, you look like it, like you're from the area and pickpockets and nefarious sorts of people are not going to pickpocket locals as much as they will tourists because tourists are kind of like sitting ducks and we're sort of helpless. So if you can look like you're from the area, that's like the best thing to do. So buying clothes somewhere is actually a great thing and that also allows you to pack lighter. Packing lighter is helpful too because you're not going to be burdened down with a whole bunch of bags and things. The less bags you have, the more you know, free hands you've got to handle whatever situation may arise. Um, when you've got a whole bunch of bags, everything is harder. So if you can carry less, that's also a really great thing. I have one funny tip for blending in with locals, and that is carry a shopping bag from a local grocery store. There are certainly places in the world where you can never look like a local, but you can look like an expat. You can look like you know what you're doing and like you're from the area simply by having a shopping bag. So, you know, when you've got like water and you've got like just little sundry things in your bag that you need to carry around with you in say Paris or something, go run to Carrefour, the grocery store, grab, you know, those sundry things, get, grab some food. It's what you tote around your wine and baguette and cheese in and um, carry like that local grocery bag with your stuff. And then you look like you're from you look like you're from France. So it makes things like a little bit easier. Um, just little things like that can make you look like you're from a place. So number three, don't be flashy. You don't need to bring the bling when you are traveling. You don't want to bring things that are like heirlooms or that like have a lot of meaning to you because one, if they get lost, stolen, or broken, that's going to hurt your heart. Um, on top of you may be missing out on money or monetarily expensive things, right? So when you travel, maybe don't bring a big flashy ring. I, I have a friend and she brings um, this, <laughs> she has a flashy fake diamond that costs her all of like $10 at Target and that's what she wears. But in my mind, some some pickpocket or somebody that's looking to rob you or something still sees the big flashy bling bling. So I'm like, you know, sometimes I very often I travel with a wedding ring that is really simple and plain that doesn't actually have any meaning to me because it's not really my wedding ring. Um, and it didn't cost me much money, but also it's not really big and sparkly. And that big sparkly thing is what catches people's eyes. So it's kind of a good thing to leave those things at home. Next, dress modestly. Um, I know that I shouldn't have to say that, that we should be able to dress however we wish. But the truth is, especially when you are a single um, woman traveling alone, unfortunately, that's just the way the world works. And, it, you know, it helps if we are not showing too much skin. And in some places, it's really culturally inappropriate to do that. So just be mindful of how you're dressing and what, you know, what your clothing says about you. And I hate to say that, but it is what it is. And our safety is foremost. And that's what this video is all about. So please take that to heart that I don't mean to tell you how to dress, but I do mean to say we have to be, we have to be cognizant of what it says to others, especially to people who, you know, like, Good people aren't going to do anything no matter how you're dressed, but bad people, bad people might. So we need to be aware of that as women. Walk with three things, confidence, awareness, and hot coffee. Okay, so that sounds silly, but when you are confident, when you are comfortable in what you what you are doing and where you're going, it's a lot easier to like navigate things and you also, nobody's going to come, but if you like 
if you look meek and scared, you know, somebody who's not like a great person, you know, they're like, oh, I can get that. I can, I can, I can go grab her. I can totally take her purse, you know, whatever. So if you, it just feel confident, um, that goes back to dressing too. When you dress and you're comfortable, that kind of builds up your confidence too. So keep those things in mind. Awareness. We are all taught as girls to be aware of our surroundings, right? Well, that is never more important than when you are traveling, particularly alone. Uh, but we are never more inundated with other things that take our attention away than we are when we're traveling. So get your phone, um, put your phone in your pocket, study your map ahead of time so you kind of know where you're going so you're not like constantly looking down. Keep your eyes up and um, in Greek we say tomatia tesera, your eyes for two in front, two in back. Pay attention to what's going on around you, just be aware. Yes, it takes ex extra effort, but it's worth the extra effort. The coffee, that's a fun one. I took a, a self-defense class. Um, I've taken several self-defense classes, but one of them told me to walk around with hot coffee because it's a really great weapon. Like if somebody comes up to you and your hackles are up and you just know they're not good people and you got hot coffee, you can throw it on them and run and it gives you that split second to get away. Is that something I really do? No, but if you're leaving a bar alone by your, you know, like at night somewhere and you're not really sure, Nine times out of ten, they've got coffee somewhere and a bartender would be happy to give it to you. You know, they have stuff like that for DDs and whatnot. So you can take that with you and just, you may never need it. And I pray you don't, but maybe it might just, you know, help give you a minute to get away. Another thing about bartenders, bartenders, hotel people, all the people you come in contact with, um, you know, they're in positions of knowledge about a place or an area tell them you know it i mean you have to like judge whether or not they're very trustworthy but ask them where to go where not to go tell them you're traveling alone and say hey you know i want to go to this place tonight would that be okay and they'll be like oh yeah that's super you know no worries it's totally safe or oh my gosh don't go there during the night and or you know maybe you can go there but you should definitely take a cab don't do that on foot there are those things. So talk to the people, talk to locals, talk to people you know who have been to different places and um, get that information and let people know that, you know, you don't necessarily know where you're going. Also with bartenders, when you're out, um, going to a bar or pub is a really great, great way to meet people, but you don't want to get overly drunk because you're not paying attention as well as you should be. Drinking, I, I certainly drink when I travel, but I never get more than tipsy, and if I get tipsy, I, I stay, take a step back and I drink some water and I sober up before I go anywhere or do anything, particularly if I'm alone. Um, you know, our inhibitions go down when we're drinking and it's just really important to keep those inhibitions as high as possible when we're traveling on our own. When traveling internationally, you should know two things. The word for help in the local language and also the number for emergency because it's not 911 everywhere, kids. You gotta get that local emergency number and have it memorized and know how to ask for help. Um, another good thing is to know the word fire or something like that because sometimes help, you know, people just kind of hear help and they just ignore it, like, you know, Peter and the wolf kind of thing. So if you have some kind of like word that will grasp people's attention, that's a really good thing to have in your back pocket. Plan when and where you're going to places and let somebody know. When you're traveling, give your itinerary to your spouse, your, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your mom, your dad, somebody, somebody you trust at home. And so they know where you're supposed to be, where you're staying. If things change, let them know where you're staying. If your hostel changes, you know, or um, something happened at your Airbnb and you can't stay there because you don't have water or something, tell them where you're going. Um, give them contact information so somebody at home knows where you are and that you're okay. Um, and should, God forbid anything happened, they know how to find you. Use your common sense, kids. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, when we were when we were in kindergarten, we all learned to look both ways before we crossed the street. We were told not to take candy from strangers and not to get in cars with strangers. Please don't do those things as adults. Do not get in a car with someone you don't know. Um, don't take a drink that is open from somebody you don't know. Watch the bartender open that beer for you. Don't take a beer that some guy just handed you. Come on, just use your, use your, 
common sense, those things that we were all taught as children, keep your eyes up, don't be looking at your phone all the time, um, pay attention to, you know, like, please look before you cross the street. I can't tell you how many tourists, men, women, and children alike, that are crossing streets without looking. So those basic things, keep them in the forefront of your mind because yes, you get caught up in looking at the architecture or you know just whatever the atmosphere is going on around you, the market, whatever. But you gotta still remember to do those basic things so that you're safe. I will tell this to every woman in the world, take a self-defense class. Don't take it just to learn how to fight or anything like that. Take it um, for your own confidence because once you've finished a class, you actually you, you feel better about your abilities and just knowing how to handle a situation. And most of those situations do not require you to actually physically defend yourself. Most of, Most bad situations, it is a cut and run or take yourself out of the position. You know, if somebody comes up to you and they look like they're kind of menacing or something, um, have a safety question in the back of your head. And that might, you know, maybe your safety question is where's the post office? If you can take somebody out of their mindset for just a second, it gives you the chance to like just turn around and get away. Also, we talk about situational awareness and um, you know, like, is this place safe or is this place not? Um, it's kind of like reading a room when you're in, in when you're in a meeting or something. Know the tensions around you. If people feel comfortable, you know, and everybody's like laid back and laughing and it's really easy, that dark alley might not be bad. You know, it might be full of little old ladies who are just hanging out their their laundry or something. That that's okay. But if you walk somewhere and you you feel those little hairs on the back of your neck stand up listen to your gut listen listen to your body it, it will tell you things that you need to know sometimes before your brain like really acknowledges it so think about those things when you're traveling travel advisories are always listed on the u.s state department's website canada has one you know like pretty much every country will list, you know, safety things. So you need to kind of like check those things out before you travel. Um, you can look on your own countries. You can look on the country you're going to, but those are good things just to be aware of um, because, you know, geopolitical things change and sometimes it's not good and sometimes it's just fine, but you need to be aware of how that is. And you may need to, you may need to change your plans if you're traveling and you're going from place to place. You may need to pivot and go somewhere else. And again, if you do that, you need to let somebody know about it. I also have a big rule about avoiding any kind of protest, um, you know, like if there's demonstrations and things like that going on because one, I don't know what's being said sometimes, especially if it's not in, in English or a language that I have some semblance of. So it's a good idea to pay attention to those things and like kind of head the other way if there's some kind of protest because you never know, they can turn violent and you may be caught in the middle of it, so stay away from those. I accidentally got stuck in one, Mark, me, and the boys. Um, we were in France and it was fine. It was a very peaceful demonstration but we didn't realize it until we were like right in the middle of it all of a sudden and that's coming from us who are very well traveled so we just took off and we went the other way and everything was fine but pay attention to those things i also think that safety comes when we're in the hotels not just when we're out and about on the streets so when you're in your hotel it's a great idea to make use of the hotels um, safe for like your passport and things like that you don't want to lose those you don't need to like get pickpocketed and lose your passport because oh my gosh that would be really awful because your entire trip is going to be taken up by hanging out at the embassy trying to get yourself a new passport to get home with so use hotel safes and also I know a lot of women and I have certainly done this when traveling by myself take a door stop and you can like when you go to sleep at night just stick that on your side of the door so that somebody can't just get in I know it seems extreme right but it's really a small thing and you know it's it's a good safety thing um, people talk about whistles. Mace is often, by the way, pepper spray and mace um, are, are illegal in a lot of places. So you need to check that if you plan on taking it. I don't take it. A whistle might be a really great thing to have on your person, you know, like, um, like maybe on your zipper or something. I know people have them like that. So there are other things other than 
then mace and, and whatnot that you can that you can use to draw attention to your needing help. So last but not least, I want you to not be too trusting. Be a little bit suspicious of people. Yes, most people are good, but some people are just not good. And sometimes we misjudge that. And you just, I want you to be careful and to be safe. And so don't be too trusting. Don't give too much information about yourself. For instance, if you look at my Instagram, whatever is being posted, I am not there. I never, never post social media until I've left a place. Sometimes I'm many days out from the place that I'm posting about because it's not good for people to know exactly where you are at all times. The only people that should know where you are are people that you know, trust, and who love you and would take care of you and are there um, to make sure you're okay. So don't put that out there for everybody. Also, don't talk about when you're going to another place or where you're staying. You don't need to tell the guy sitting next to you at the bar where you're staying and, you know, that chick over there that you've been talking to, um, she might not need to know, you know, when your next flight is or what train you're getting on. Sometimes you need to kind of be reserved about those things. And if they tell you, keep that in the back of your head, you know, and maybe if you're on the same one and you see them, then that's great. And you can pick up a conversation and, and many wonderful friendships have been started by traveling around. But you need to have some level of comfort and knowledge about a person before you start giving them information that can be used in a not safe form. So, okay, those are a whole bunch of things. There are probably 500 more. Please, ladies, put your stuff down in, in your comments down in the section below. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about how we can be safe and um, what we can do to make ourselves less of a target for pickpockets and nefarious people that we don't want to hang out with and we don't want them taking advantage of us, me, you, or any other woman in the world. So let's all band together and try to stay safe and share our information. Bye from Northern Ireland.